Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this book summary, at least for chapters four, five, and six of the book titled Growing Yourself Up. Uh, to bring the best of all of life's relationship, this is done by Dr. Jenny Brown, who um, co-founded the Family Systems Institute in Australia. And so the concepts of this book are taken from Bowen Systems Theory. Bowen Systems Theory is really uh, used in all walks of life. Uh, it's used in family counseling. It is used in personal self-development. And it is also used in leadership theory um, by Friedman. And so, but before we can become effective leaders in our places of work or in our homes or in our communities, we need to first focus on ourselves. And so that's really what this book is about. This book is about focusing on yourself so that after doing the work, you can then become an effective leader wherever you are serving. And so this presentation focuses on chapters four, five, and six from her book, Growing Yourself Up, and really is a focus on uh, one phase of leaving the home a second phase of being a young single adult, and a third phase, which is marriage. And so let's go ahead and dig in. And so uh, I always like starting each chapter with a great quote, and these quotes are provided from the author, but this one really hit home. And that is that the person who runs away from their family of origin really is just as emotionally dependent as the one who never leaves home. Right? Both of these uh, folks are seeking and needing emotional closeness, but for whatever reason, they have become allergic to it. And so we shouldn't judge one as being better than the other. And most likely, all of us, to some degree, have been either one who runs or one who never leaves. But this creates good self-awareness as we dive further into the topic. And see, these are the main bullet points that I took away from the chapter. Feel free to uh, screenshot these or maybe write one or two down that you think can be helpful for you in your own development. But we lead, uh, the way we view the world, the way we view leadership is greatly impacted by what happened to us in our, in our homes and how we left our homes. And so uh, a healthy leaving home transition is very balanced. It allows for connection with our parents and our family members, but at the same time, it provides freedom and independence. Too much of either can be unhealthy. Now, for parents in this phase, uh, the goal for parents when children are leaving the home is to really let go of the reins, to pull back a little bit, to not um, overfunction, and to have a goal of eventually, over time, forging a more adult relationship. So if this can be your goal, that is critical for success. Now, you know you're doing a good job, either as a parent or a child, because there's two sides of the equation. But you know success is being had when both the parents and the adults feel comfortable in maintaining uh, somewhat regular contact. And it doesn't have to be physical. It can be on the phone or, or through texting, uh, but not too much contact, but somewhat regular contact in sharing the news of life. While at the same time, uh, the children don't have to feel as if they have to invite the parents to take over, and the parents don't feel as if they have to take over, or helicopter, as they say in today's times. At the same time, for parents in this equation, it's very helpful to keep in mind their own tension points that existed when they left home. Uh, that helps you to look at the situation through the eyes of the child, and also, it's very important that both parties increase their tolerance for being okay with and knowing that the other won't be 100% honest. As in reality, none of us are 100% honest with adults that we interact with. So, um, Because we don't feel the need to burden everyone with every detail. And so being okay with that, again, is a good sign of a healthy leaving of home. Now, if we run away or we cut off from our parents, or our children cut off from us, uh, this can keep both sides stuck in their anxiety. And so it's important to keep in mind things that may be happening at home during the departure. That could be sickness, or a job loss, or uh, separation, 
or loss of a family member, these are things that can keep us uh, quite understandably in anxiety. Now we know that we are that the relationship is in a distancing phase when superficiality is the norm, where nothing real is being shared. I always like to say, you know, there's uh, one person uncomfortable or anxious in the relationship uh, if the topic of weather comes up uh, very soon and very unnecessary, unnecessarily, right? There's nothing, no real conversation being had. And, uh, and where either one is being seen as a burden, the parents in particular. Now, uh, there's hope here, and it's going to be paradoxical, but it's that uh, more family contact, and that's healthy contact, not smothering, not over-functioning, but more family contact can actually help us to become comfortable in these relationships. They can provide us with corrective experiences, and opportunities to maybe redo some things that weren't done well. And so by increasing family contact, we can then have another opportunity to relaunch, to grow in maturity, and to better manage our anxiety. And so some questions for consideration, uh, and I would do this either in a journaling format or with another person is, what was it like for you when you went about leaving home? Or maybe you're a parent and you're experiencing some distance from your child. What was that process like for them when they left home? Where was it on this continuum between either running away or staying overly dependent? And so as you think about this, as you talk about this, as you journal about this, feel free to include basic family of origin details, such as what was your parents' leaving home experience like? What was going on during the time of the departure? Uh, those details will really help. So the next phase, which makes sense, is the phase of the single young adult. Um, this can be longer for some, shorter for some. I think in American society, we put this unnecessary pressure on people um, to not live long in this phase, to immediately get married. And I'll say it's perfectly normal for people to be in this phase longer than others and maybe even beneficial but in chapter five, we're talking about learning how to relate wisely to ourself as a young adult. So again, another great quote here from Murray Bowen, the founder of Bowen Systems. And he says that for less mature people, a lot of life energy goes into seeking love and approval. And as a result, there's little energy left for self-determined or goal-directed activity. And so another way to think about this is uh, those of us who are experiencing a failure to launch or have loved ones who are failing to launch, uh, it could very well be because they're spending much of their life energy trying to get the love and approval of those around them. And so uh, putting more actions and plans and activities in front of them may not be what gets them going, but maybe working on building your relationship is what is needed in that situation. And so here are some highlights again from the chapter. Uh, I would say pick one or two of these that resonated with you to explore in further detail and maybe journal or discuss with peers. So for a lot of young adults, uh, especially those who maybe were highly fused and it was hard to separate, uh, the temptation can be for these young adults to rely too much on other relationships, to immediately jump from a family relationship to trying and find that life partner. And so this can become an obstacle in growing in our maturity. We really grow in our maturity during this phase when we are comfortable and okay being uh, alone. Being alone is not the same thing as being lonely. Uh, being alone is a, is a good thing. Um, having anxiety about what the person's life direction is, is very common during this phase. This can be seen in, in terms of changing vocations changing majors, uh, changing places to live, uh, changing the way one dresses or groups that they hang out with. Uh, as a parent, it's, it's very easy to fall into anxiety in this phase, but it's really normal uh, for young adults to be figuring out who they are and where they want to go. And so we have to be comfortable with uh, anxiety of a young person in this phase. Now, we talked about this earlier, but whatever degree of existing family anxiety is happening at this time of life will have a huge impact on how effective a person is in becoming a mature individual. So uh, sometimes people leave the home and parents divorce 
Sometimes a parent will share a chronic illness. Sometimes there is a job loss. Uh, many things can happen. So whatever anxiety is happening in the family of origin can definitely impact the degree of maturity that a single young adult has in this phase. Now, one of the great things about this phase is that there's a huge opportunity to learn and to become competent in what we call self-regulation, right? What do you do to be calm? For many, that's breathing and relaxing. For others, it's practicing silence and solitude. For some, it's being in creation and walking. For others, it's something physical like exercise, but learning to identify what helps you to self-regulate in this phase is incredibly important. At the same time, this is also a really good time to practice increasing your tolerance for discomfort. Right? When we are young and we are children, most of our decisions are controlled by the amygdala, which is a emotion-centered part of the brain, whereas as we get older, uh, more of our decision-making becomes logical by the prefrontal cortex, and so that happens between the ages of 20 and 25. And so this is a great opportunity to intentionally, um, not to be ascetic, but to intentionally be okay um, with not getting things the way that you want them, maybe denying yourself the simple pleasures of life like coffee or dessert or whatnot, and practice saying no. To, in other words, learn becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. Very, very key part of growing and maturity in this phase. Singleness is a great time also for us to practice balancing this connection with others being independent uh, versus being connected. And so a great time to experiment with introversion and extroversion. How much of your time do you find yourself being recharged by groups versus being re recharged uh, solo? And what does that balance of spending time with others versus uh, making your own decisions? What does that look like? What does that balance look like? Uh, we can't love others well until we learn how to love ourselves. And so that balance allows us to do so. This is also a really great phase and time to practice learning to separate what ifs from what nows, i.e. anxiety. So what ifs is a uh, spending an unnecessary um, amount of time focusing on the future when really so many things could happen and instead focusing a lot on the present and learning to accept and to take things as they come. And so this is a really great time to practice this. And I will say, as you become better at doing this, as you grow in this phase, um, you're changing, and so the system is changing. So as you become more mature, uh, your family, your siblings will see this happening. And so in order to try and unconsciously maintain uh, homeostasis, you might experience some pushback from siblings or from parents. And that's okay. It's a normal part of the process. A new normal is being found. And so... This is where uh, I encourage young people to hold fast. I encourage parents to hold fast. And eventually a new homeostasis, a new normal will be found. So some questions for discussion are, uh, and this is an important one, how can you practice using your own internal calming tools or self-regulation tools to deal with stress? Um, and this is really good if you're sharing this example or you're journaling about it to do so, talking about a specific example of what calming tools you would have used or wish you could have used. Sometimes learning from our mistakes can be better than learning from our successes. So the next phase, um, again, sometimes it happens after being single for a short period of time, sometimes a longer period of time. Uh, neither is preferred, both are good, but uh, eventually many of us find ourselves in marriage and this is a really important phase for us to learn that we can only change ourselves. We cannot change our spouse. And I love this quote, probably because it's very true, but quite honestly, no one is really ready for marriage. Marriage is what makes us ready for marriage. And I would probably um, say that the same can be said for parenthood. So again, these are the main points of the chapter. Um, chapter six, again, pick one or two that you feel like will be helpful for you to further explore or to journal on. But there's a thing called false harmony, or uh, other people refer to this as the pseudo-self or the fake self. So this really happens in a marriage where one person is the gallant rescuer, or what I like to call the overfunctioner, 
when the other person in the relationship is the more fragile rescued one or the underfunctional. And so this pattern can set place over such a long period of time that it seems as if it's normal, but really there needs to be give and take in relationship. And so this is not true harmony, but a false harmony. And so we know that we are fused in a relationship. Another word for fusion is lack of individuality. Uh, when you are not being your true self, a great sign of this is when we are expecting the other person to be a mind reader and to just know what's going on with us. If that's something that you're expecting, that's a great indicator for you that maybe some more individuality should be brought into the relationship. And so a mature marriage is when you're able to talk clearly and honestly about what you need in the relationship while also not attacking. In my experience, I language is very helpful here. Um, you know, I um, am in a place in my life where it would be helpful for me if uh, I experienced this. Uh, unhelpful language would be saying you always or you never. You always do so and so and you make me so mad, or you never do so-and-so, and you make me hurt. So again, language matters, using self-focused language as opposed to other-directed language. Be uh, believing that we can change the other person, this is a great way to hinder your own opportunity to maturity. Uh, you will have blind spots and not be able to grow yourself if you're busy focusing on changing the other person. If you're Going into the beginning of a relationship thinking that you can change them, unfortunately, you're only sabotaging yourself. It's also important to know that when we are criticizing and critiquing, whether it's internal or external, these are really just projections of our own insecurities, right? Projection is when we have something that uh, we don't want to face, we don't want to wrestle with, and so instead uh, it comes out and we put it upon other people and we focus on them when in reality, it's probably something that we should be wrestling with ourselves. And so if we want to become more of our own person, of a mature or self-differentiated person, then we need to shift focus to managing ourselves. And the primary thing that we manage is our own anxiety. We learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Now, it's also important for us to be aware that when marriage stress increases, again, Maybe a child leaves the home, maybe there's a sickness, maybe there's a job ch challenge. We'll be tempted to revert to what we call our inner child habits. And so think about some of the things that you did to get quick fixes or to get your needs met as a child in your family of origin. Under extreme amounts of stress, we will find ourselves reverting to um, these unhealthy habits. Now, uh, to manage anxiety, we usually choose one of three different patterns. All of us choose them. Uh, some of us lean into one pattern more than another. And so the first is going to be conflict or distance. This is where we just start uh, verbalizing points of disagreement and over time we become tired of it and so distance occurs. There is an extreme version of conflict and distance known as cutoff. Pretty self-explanatory. Another pattern that can emerge is called the one up, one down position. You might also hear to uh, hear this being called the uh, over functioning and under functioning position. This is where I talked about earlier how one is the gallant rescuer and the other is the fragile rescued one. And so that would be an unnecessary pattern. Uh, it's interesting. We find that people who are over functioners at work usually are under functioners at home and vice versa. Again, that's not all the time but uh, it is a very common pattern. So know that you can have one position in one relationship and an opposite position in another relationship. Again, homeostasis is working in the background. And then the last pattern of managing anxiety is what we call the three-step, also referred to in Bowen Systems Theory as the triangle. So we become anxious about our relationship with um, person B, and so we redirect focus on person C, the most common triangle for all of us is going to be either uh, our relationship with our parents or our relationship with our spouse and our child. And so for, for families who are used to uh, triangling and projecting onto their children, uh, and that is a way for them to cope, this can be a very uh, challenging period of life when their children leave home. 
because there's no one to triangle, and so these two people are left having to deal with one another, which is why empty nesters uh, can have such a challenging time period in life. And so uh, the key for this chapter, and I would say for all chapters and for all books in Bowen Systems Theory, is that progress can truly be made when we are choosing to focus on and manage ourselves. If we can choose to manage ourselves, the great paradox is, and I can promise you this from experience and observation, is that slowly over time, those around us will begin to change. And so some discussion questions or journaling questions here would be, which of these three maturity detours are you most prone to in your relationship with your spouse or significant other? Is it conflict and distancing or it's cousin uh, in the extreme cutoff? Is it be over and under functioning or as we called it earlier, the one up one down position? Or is it triangling and focusing on a third party or a child? And try to be specific about how this is occurring and it will provide you a great opportunity for growth. And so that's it for the presentation. Uh, this is just a small sampling of the great work that Jenny Brown has done. Know that when you do this work on yourself and practice it, it will then have a ripple effect on your other relationships and it will make you a great leader in your home, in your place of work, and in your community. So I wish you the best of luck.